a squashed owl production. Hi, and welcome to Clive Barker Podcast Presents Fundraiser 3 Hell on Earth. So this is our second uh, Amiga video game uh, video review. Uh, the first one was Nightbreed, the interactive movie, and you can go back and see that one if you missed it. Uh, the next one is actually the first game of this series, and it's called Nightbreed, the action game. Uh, so it's, of course, like before, I'll be playing it on my original hardware, which is my Amiga 500. Uh, I don't like emulating. Um, it, it's, uh, from 1990 Ocean Software, which means they made two games in the same year. So that, if you saw the quality of the, of the interactive movie on my last game, or if you happen to know about it, on my last video, and you, or you happen to know about it, um, doesn't bode well for this one, but we'll see. Um, it was made for the Amiga 500, uh, Commodore 64, ZX Spectrum, uh, and DOS. Uh, and I believe the Amiga game was only available in Europe, because I could only ever find a PAL version, and I never even knew about this game back when it came out. So I used to own Nightbreed the Interactive Movie because there was a North American version, but I don't, I never had this one. So as you can see, I bought it on eBay and it was, it was an old budget, budget package version of this game. Um, also the naming is confusing on this because sometimes it's called Nightbreed the Action Game and sometimes it's just called Nightbreed. So I actually ended up buying like four copies of Nightbreed the Interactive Movie with different covers before I actually got this one. So uh, this one's a little more rare. Um, oh yeah, so before we get started, I guess we'll kind of take a look at the manual and see. So now if you remember in Nightbreed, the interactive movie, the um, it was kind of annoying that one of the Nightbreed, the, the flying manta ray dude with the teeth, would um, would attack you. So in this game, you have to watch out for Big Fly, Fat Man, Snake Man, the Berserkers, Flying Teeth Again, uh, Head Monster, Roof Crawler, Hopper, Scorpion Man, Eyeball Monster. Uh, so that's in addition to the Sons of the Free and Decker. So, um, geez, man, uh, thanks a lot, Nightbreed. It may, really makes you really makes you want to um, want to help these guys. <sighs> so anyway, um, oh yeah, and then let's go. Let's take one. Let's look at their hints and tips. There are a couple of good ones on here. Don't fight if you don't have to, as this will drain your energy. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. And make a map. All right, so the, lots of fun to be had, and let's get started. Okay, so here we go. The, the uh, opening here, you'll notice that there's some actual music, which is kind of interesting, but unfortunately... Uh, throughout the re uh, 90 percent of the game there will be no music it's just mainly sound effects which are in some cases are kind of funny um, so as you get started you're uh, of course you're Aaron Boone you are um, right you start out in the graveyard area where you're fighting uh, a lot of the sons of the three but you're also fighting Nightbreed and you know I just have to say one more time thanks a lot jerks I'm supposed to be your savior, yet they all want to kill you. So um, that's what's happened. So you you start out in the graveyard and you kind of work your way down through uh, kind of a catacomb area. That's like there's three levels. So you got that one, then you're in the catacombs, and that's where you fight the bigger, uh, more annoying types of um, night breed. Uh, and, oh yeah, just a quick thing about that. So the enemies, um, the big night breed enemies that you fight, I found out something that was really interesting. So now you know, in the movie, when John Agar's character says, there are all kinds of breed and all kinds of ways to kill them. Uh, fire for some, bullets for others. Well, as it turns out, uh, what, and what I learned from this game, that's not exactly true. Um, Nightbreed are immune to punches. 
See, check, look out, check out this guy. I swear to God, I punched this guy for 12 minutes straight. I, I had a cheat on so that I would, uh, had unlimited lives, and I just was punching this guy for 12 minutes straight before he finally died. Uh, but if you kick, if you kick, then all of a sudden the, the Nightbreed go flying, you know, down the hall, and sometimes they're dead after that. So, um, pro tip, Nightbreed are immune to punches, but they are weak to being kicked. Who knew? All right, so you go down, um, you go down the 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 catacomb area. Uh, you uh, and while you're in there, you get in a fight with Decker, and he sort of like falls through uh, through some ropes, and or he falls through a bridge or whatever, and you're, he just disappears off the bottom of the screen. So then, then after that happens. Um, Baphomet calls to you. He's like, "Hey, get down! Get down here! I gotta, um, you gotta release the berserkers or whatever." So come talk to me. So you go talk to, uh, you go all the way down to the next area, which is the Ropey Bridge. Uh, your first introduction to the Ropey Bridge area is this flying eyeball dude that chases you around, zapping you. And I don't think there's any way you can fight him. In fact. I think that most of the enemies in this game are pretty much unavoidable. They will hurt you and there's nothing you can do about it. You get enemies flying at you, punching you. In fact, going back to the catacombs, there's, there are two areas, there are these big chasms, and the only way to get across is to, I swear to God, is to have one of the Nightbreed punch you and make you fly across the chasm. Um, so anyway, you're down in the ropey bridge area. You get past the flying eyeball guy because I don't think you can beat him. Uh, you go all the way down. Um, and you gotta make sure you get collect the Midian key so you can open the door to Baphomet. Do not, you know, just like the the other game, the older game, um, the, or the the Nightbreed, the interactive movie. You cannot. Uh, do this stuff in the wrong order. So if you open the doors to the berserkers early, it says, "Oh, the berserkers tore you to pieces," which would be fine if they actually showed it, but they don't. You don't actually ever see the berserkers. So anyway, um, you go over to Baphomet's chamber, and you get this nice, you know, message saying, "Hey." Get Thank you. You're no longer booing your cabal. Now you gotta go release the berserkers and free the other night breed. And so you go do that. them you work your way back up and then you find out wait don't no, go back down again because the mask you know of course Decker took uh, kidnapped Lori wait a minute Mexico's in there twice So you gotta go back down and fight uh, the mask again, this time to the death. And then Lori sort of falls out of the ceiling 
and you're like, yay, okay, Lori, let's go, and you work your way back up again, and then you get the ending. So, it's a strange game. I mean, it. I I like the design of the monsters. I think some of the monsters are kind of cool. So, they're, they're goofy and they're really irritating. I mean, I think that the... Um, this game is not fair. Yeah, you, I couldn't beat it without cheating. Uh, maybe some other, some other people out there can, but uh, I mean, these monsters hurt you. Uh, you got rocks falling on your head and, and uh, fire, you know, and, and grenades and crap flying out of the side of the screen to blow you up. And, and it doesn't, Boone doesn't really move fast enough to avoid this stuff. Uh, and I wish I had known about the kicking thing early on in the game, because I spent a long time trying to punch these enemies. Oh, I did want to mention also um, that if you look at the credits here, Image Animation is credited with helping design the game, which is pretty awesome. So, um, all in all, I love this game uh, more than Nightbreed the Interactive Movie. I think this one was more fun. I just wish that, uh, I think something that, that, um, should go away with video games is where you're in areas that all look the same and you get lost and you push up to go into a door and then you're into another corridor that looks just like the one you were in before. That's not cool, okay? Uh, don't, don't design your games like that, you know? Don't make a game where you get lost Nobody likes getting lost. Getting lost is not fun. Video games are supposed to be fun. Okay, so we'll start with sound. I think for sound, really, there's a generic... The music is really generic and sounds a lot like the music in... Uh, Nightbreed, the interactive movie, uh, and in fact, there's no music in most of the game, and the sound effects, when you, you hear a lot of lightning sounds, I mean, that's the majority of it, and, and you know, Boone going, ugh, uh, so other than that, you've got music at the intro, music when you meet Baphomet, and music uh, when you beat the game, so, um, really, sound, I would give this a 4 out of 10, it's not great. Uh, graphics is a little better. Um, I kind of like the the uh, you know the digitized pictures of from you know Nightbreed characters and stuff that that show up in the in the you know as sort of the cutscene type stuff. Um, the uh, the the and the adaptation if it's, is it a good adaptation of Nightbreed? I think it's a lot better than the the one that's the interactive movie, which is kind of ironic. Uh, so I give that a 7 out of 10, and I think I said 6 out of 10 for the graphics. Uh, for fun, actually, at first I was not having fun, but the more I played this, the more I got into it. And I put this off for a while because I was I was dreading playing this game, but actually the more I played it, the more fun I have. So I would give that a 7 out of 10. So an average I would get a 6 out of 10. <laughs> 